Okay. Thank you for tuning in. And if this is the first time uh, tuning in into my channel, I would really like appreciate if you press the like the, a button and you subscribe to my channel if you do like the content. Okay, let's get on to it. So I came to Saudi Arabia in 2017. And if I can go through my inbox on Messenger, on Facebook, and go through all the messages that people have been like my colleagues, my co-workers, my previous classmates, you know, from nursing college who've been asking, how do you get there? How, what did you do to go there? You know, and I felt today, let me just make this video. So whoever comes and asks me now, I'll just forward this video. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, and also again, yeah, let's get into it. So, first of all, probably why you clicked on this video, you are deciding or you're thinking, should I, should I immigrate? Should I go to Saudi Arabia? Oh, should I, you know, so why Saudi Arabia? First of all, we come here because the salary is good. I don't want to lie. The salary is good. I'm going to get into it. How much is it? The basic salary when you get in yeah for the first timers and then also again the lifestyle is very affordable and also again no one leaves no one i believe no one will ever ever leave their comfort zone can't eat everything is okay so probably you've decided you've taken a decision or you're still thinking why should i go to Saudi arabia should i go wherever why here why in you know why am i saying why did i i for your way to not tell you choose to come to saudi the first of all is that there are nursing agencies in south africa that are very friendly for us like as south africans if you want to come in here you've got we've got dynamic uh we've got symbiosis you know and I'm so grateful for them because they actually do help us a lot in terms of coming in here. So you've decided, okay, fine, I want to go to Saudi Arabia. I want to change my financial situation because in my case, like I was, wow, wow. I was like, you know, it was just getting too much. It was, yeah, I felt like I'm overwhelmed with all the financial uh, crisis that I had. You know, and I decided, first of all, we we had a business, like we had a, a network. I'm, as I said on my other video that I'm very good at talking. So we had a, we were doing networking with my ex-husband and it was doing well, our business. Like I must say, you know, we got to travel. One day I'll talk about it. We got to travel to Spain, France and uh, Spain, France and Italy. No, it's yes in italy so it was doing very well and then you know like we humans once your salary gets to once you know that you know now your you, your demands they get higher you know it's like once you know but okay i've got an extra income the mistake that we make you try and change your lifestyle so i believe that we change our lifestyle so soon and we got ourselves into so much trouble and at some point the business failed so we found ourselves in a very uh, financial crisis that at that time we we're like oh gosh you know and i had that thing you know, but um my father did uh unfortunately pass on when we were very young but one thing that we're grateful for and um uh, is that he left us a home you know so i had that fear like i had that fear of, um i've got three kids and now we can't even afford a house we can't even afford a bond so how what am i going to do you know it's yeah it's too much so i decided one day while i was scrolling down uh facebook and i saw a dynamic post and i'm like wow okay let me just uh upload my cv and take it from there and if i can tell you I uploaded my CV on the Timic page, like on Facebook, they have um, a Facebook page, Timic Connections. Then uh, there was an option there to upload your CV. I did it. I just uploaded my CV because my CV is always on my phone. <laughs> and then anyway, um, we, we, uh, after that, 
I was contacted back by the agent, Daimi Connection, and uh, they were and they were having interviews in Sentin in Sentin that year. It was 2017 April. They were having interviews in in Sentin, so they invited me for the interview and um they asked me what post yes like if you're a nurse you know you are a midwife you're an er nurse you are a surgical nurse you're an or nurse so you'll apply according to the specialty that you're doing so that time i was doing er okay fine so the interview and then once you've shown interest and in that they've contacted you back they will actually send you a checklist a checklist regarding the unit like that you are going to work in so for me the checklist that they sent that was for er it had like equipment are you able to use this equipment chest chop uh, uh, equipment intubation all of those things it's you know you tick 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 how competent are you into using um those um equipment and what have you would you you know so you i went through that checklist and then that was before the interview then um it was the day of the interview and then i did go for the interview wow wow you know me whenever i'm going for an interview i started like the whole test book like you know no 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 <laughs> so like yeah i was like okay fine i'm like okay i'm so nervous and i went for the interview and if i can tell you that saudi interviews i'm telling you today i told the other guy like two weeks back and i said he was stressing he's like tell me v tell me v as he tell me v uh what are they going to ask me i said they're going to ask you unit related uh questions like i cannot know what they're going to ask for surgical units what they're going to ask for or because i'm not an or nurse i'm not a surgical unit nurse but for er um I, I have to switch on my phone i have to switch on my phone it's, it's really disturbing me uh so i'll just put it on silent sorry about that so i said okay so we i got disturbed you know <laughs> yeah you know being a mother you can never i i always salute the people who i always salute the people that can sleep with their phone on silent and their mothers and fathers like wow guys yeah so anyway sorry about that so i was saying when you go to the interviews they are the most friendless interviews you can ever be the saudi interviews because you go in there you know when i'm going for an interview oh i'll take the whole test book you know and be studying 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 so i remember while i was still there and i had my baby was i had a small baby i was still so i was in the car and i'm breastfeeding my baby i'm reading i've got all these papers and what have you you know and then this other guy just knocked on the door and said sorry don't panic the interviews here are actually 10 minutes do you see how many people are here and if i can tell you like it was so 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 full you know and i was like yeah and then we went in there and then while we sit we sit at there and we're talking some of the nurses have been like to saudi like even the guy who came at the door was like you know the interview here it's only like 10 minutes and they just want to see your face and um you, they want to see that you are alive you, are, you know like they are not talking to a ghost <laughs> So, uh, my wife has been working in South Arabia, is now going for the third time, the Varen Hospital. So, just relax. And yeah, I thank God always for those angels that you just meet randomly on the streets. So, yeah. Anyway, I, I went in there and we i met some ladies we said and you know i was called in for my interview since i'm an um, um, er nurse uh i was called uh, i was interviewed on er questions like i remember they asked me about myocardial um uh, infection treatment you know and i think that was the most and then the most of the most of the entire interview we were just talking we ended up talking about why you're not studying you know you, i see you've been a uh, you did your your degree and what have you now 
why don't you go for your masters i said yes i'm interested in going for my masters it like it ended up being like just the talk and I, you know and i shared why would i do my 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 masters on and what have you and that was it like that was it yeah then i went i was working that same day so uh, same day i went to night i went for my work for my night duty so every like some of the ladies that i met that were seated there i kept on calling them did you get the reply yes i did i've been taken no and my phone didn't come to only find that on my cv because my cv was always on my phone i didn't update the numbers so the number that was on my cv it was no longer working so following day i did call and um spoke to the agent i'm like and then she's like no where have you been we're looking for you i'm like really yeah did you see your email no i didn't check okay I've, and then the lady says to me i've got good and bad news i said no hmm? good and bad news says yes what is it okay start with the good news with the bad news okay uh with the good news okay the good news is that you've you've got you have been accepted you have been taken and um uh, i don't know how it feels to win lots of but that moment right there I was like yes oh yes <laughs> you know yeah yeah things are about to happen and okay the bad news is that you're going to be an ER midwife. Ooh. <laughs> I always say I was a chosen midwife, you know, because uh, even at school, I never liked midwifery. Um, I, you know, but whenever I worked, like in all the places that I've worked, like I would always end up with a pregnant woman. So eventually, yeah come to saudi you are going to be an er midwife <laughs> yeah which was the most interesting part and i took the challenge i said why not i did midwifery at school after all i am a midwife you know <laughs> so yeah so that is the process whereby you apply you contact i make connection on facebook you get them you uh, you send them your cv it's either now they can even do visual interviews now it's no longer like the previous day COVID came and taught us new things so they even hold uh visual interviews okay so after you've gotten the offer when i've gotten it, 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 once you get the offer um yeah they told me what is my offer and then i needed to accept the offer that time that time that time it was 2017 and the offer that i was getting it was like double the salary i was getting in south africa wow yeah i'll tell you at the end i need you to come along with me <laughs> okay so uh now once you've got the offer and you've accepted the offer i promise you you're going to be happy about the offer and remembering it's a tax-free salary we are not being taxed okay so now the next step will be for you to start the process of uh, they will let you know that you need to book yourself for a prometric exam what is a prometric exam prometric exam is an exam that you do as a healthcare worker um uh, to be accepted to come and work in South Arabia like you know if you're going to UK you or USA you need to write your NCLEX exam and what which is an English test so here in South Arabia we write pro metric exam you know midwi uh, midwives they have their own exams as well but for me because I'm a nurse technician I wrote the pro metric exam so the prometric exam it was three thousand i think it still ranges on three thousand three thousand five hundred that was the first cost i paid that's something i paid to go and write the prometric exam so it's actually you know when you go on you when you go on google and google prometric exam answers and question you get all the questions and answers randomly so you just practice 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 and you go and write it's a um, multiple choice um multiple choice exam and yeah if you pass the exam 
some people they fail i think you're allowed to repeat like three times yes so you write a prometric exam after you've wrote your written the prometric exam once you pass the prometric exam uh now you're going the agent is going to take you through to uh, getting a police clearance so you need a police clearance which normally takes like six weeks um if you do it in in south africa and then also again um i'm actually making this video fast i don't know i've got I've got this sudden dizziness. I don't know why. I think it's the weather and I've switched on my AC. So I'm going to try to really clip it faster. Yeah. So that I can put on the AC. It makes so much noise when it's on. Okay. So um, you're going to get, um, you're going to, they're going to tell you to get your police clearance. Once you've gotten your police clearance, they're also going to let you know, which is like roughly like 110 something, 150, if you do it at the police station, at your nearest police station. Or if you like, you can always go to, I did it in Pretoria the second time when I was coming to South Africa, because it's not, there it takes like two weeks for you to get it. Then after that, they are going to ask, I think that time it was 6,000 rand for the data flow so what is data flow data flow it's the information from where did you go to school like it's a verification of the qualifications that we have like uh it comes and you're going to keep it for as long as you are in Saudi Arabia it comes with um your nursing college uh, uh information they verify that or your university uh, they verify that all the places you've worked in they verify that so it's more of a verification document that you pay for uh, the data flow and you're going to keep it like ever since i came to saudi 2017 i've now changed job but still i'm still using the previous data flow that i got so three thousand now six thousand uh for the for the data flow and then one thing that is very important i think the moment you're considering to come to Saudi arabia get a transcript you know and it's so funny because we had the transcript from college like that paper that you get when you graduate with all like your marks and what have you from first year to second year to fourth year uh, you need that if you went to university you also need a transcript from the university that we have so that to me, to me it's actually what took so much time i waited for long so long for that and it cost it cost me like roughly two thousand rand to get it but i'm so because i don't read because i don't read i had that transcript and most of us we do have it you know yeah so after that you gonna be when you get the offer obvious it tells you which hospital you're gonna go into and that's all you need that's all you need and um they're going to prepare you now for you need to do plats the most important plats that they they need it's your hepatitis your hiv as we know that if you are hiv positive unfortunately you cannot be accepted on this um on this uh on this platform or on this yeah I don't want to dwell much on that, but we all know that. So you do your platters. Your platters, roughly, they cost like 5,000 rand. Yes. So, and your chest X-ray and your PPD. PPD test is the one that checks your, uh, what you call this, your TB uh, status. And voila, that's it. That's it. Then you're going to wait now for the hospital what is nice is the fact that if you do this with the agent like you know I, I will talk about the second time when now I left the job that I came in the first time in 2017 I had personal things that I needed to go back home and sort them out and after I got so sick in 2020 I was like you know what let me just take a breather and just go home and I'll come back again well the second time around when I was doing things for myself now with no agent I felt it, you know. So the time connection, like, like yo, oh, I shame, yeah, and like you know, I I give it to them. They make the journey so flexible, so nice, so smooth for you, you know. So 
you're gonna get the offer and then you're gonna get your ticket to come to saudi uh to come to saudi arabia and the hospital and when you get to saudi now when you get to saudi um accommodation is catered for transport is catered for i told you about your salary and that your salary it's also catered for <laughs> you, it, not salary is also tax free you know so the only thing that you're going to um to spend on in saudi it, that you're going to worry about it's your stomach you know and when you get in for the first time when you come the hospital they normally would give you like a little stipend like within five days or three days so that you can get yourself food and yeah but it's advisable to also carry like cash like i would say to survive here for a month especially in regards to food you need like 500 reals 500 reals is like uh 2000 rent at home you can get through the months and buy the food and you know yeah so yeah i'm going to stop the video here i'm not feeling well <laughs> So then I'm not feeling well. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, but we'll continue. Uh, this is part one. Thank you.